In the summer of 2020, in the height of the pandemic, I was desperate with the need to take my 14-year-old daughter, Aiden, somewhere, anywhere. A friend quietly goaded me to camp with a soft, just one night. All you need is a tent and lots of blankets. I dare you. Aiden had camped with her Girl Scout troop, but me? Other than a few single nights at camp as a kid, packed like lemmings next to, the, next to a lagoon right off the five freeway, my only camping experience had been as a teenager in a crowded Yosemite campground with a friend's family. The beauty of the park couldn't surpass my discomfort with the dark and complete lack of privacy. Mere feet separated us from a vast sea of tents, which was only okay because so many people in proximity scared off the wildlife. I had not been sold on the experience. My family had never been outdoorsy. There were no full days at the beach packed with loaded coolers and the accoutrement to laze away the hours, nor were we the family who hiked, much less camped. My mom is terrified of critters. When I was 10, she took me to a retreat center in Big Sur for a month. The first night, my mom woke me. Raccoons were swarming our cabin's entry porch, roof, and walls, chattering as their clawed feet scratched the wood surfaces. I was fine, but mom was too scared to sleep alone, <laughs> even though my bed was only a few feet away. And so I spent the month sharing a small double bed with her so she could feel safe. By the end of the trip, I too was scared by even the sight of a raccoon. During Aiden's scout years, I relished that the troop gave her outdoor opportunities that didn't require my participation. But those days had ended years prior and we were chafing under the void of quarantine, but unwilling to go anywhere that would risk exposure to COVID. My friend knew all of it, my need to travel, my upbringing, and still, she dared me. Something in me sparked, some little flame that had been quietly burning unbeknownst to me, but that my friend saw when she dared me. I decided to camp. My mother was shocked when I told her about the trip. Camping was all she could manage before finally adding, won't you be scared out there in the dark? It's not safe, she shivered. I shrugged and changed the subject. For months, I'd been in deep self-discovery mode, finally realizing a core thread of my existence, that as an adoptee, I have abandonment issues. While my mom has never said anything even close to, I'm going to give you back, that threat loomed as an illogical dark cloud from the psychological rending that comes from being given up for adoption. I clung to molding myself to my mom's liking with a desperate, deep-seated belief that doing otherwise would result in my being discarded. But in trying to make myself be like my mom, I drank from the fountain of her fears, unconsciously absorbing her terror of things seen and unseen, real and imagined, until I was an addled mess. The raccoons had only been the beginning. By college, I was so high strung, I freaked out over every noise my apartment made and ran in terror from the damned possums who frequented the patio outside my door. I didn't want to be someone else anymore. I wanted to be me. It was time to burn away the coverings I'd drawn around me, those of a child wearing her parents' oversized garments in a vast decades-long game of make-believe. So I answered my friend's challenge with six nights in three different campgrounds. <laughs> Not much of an underachiever. <laughs> At our first campground, I was too busy figuring out how much ice we needed for the coolers and fussing with the camp stove to think about how radical it was that I was camping. The next two sites were in bear country. I knew that when I booked them. I mean, bear box was under the list of campsite features. I compartmentalized this detail under excessive preventative governmental caution, allowing my only active worry to be, what if I can't fit everything in there? We had just begun unloading the car when the camp host walked up. I was a little surprised, but masked my confusion. 
I just have a few instructions to relay to you, he said after welcoming us. I became alert with the desperate fervor of a nerdy straight A student trying not to let her ignorance of a new subject show lest she be revealed as uncool to the cool kids. We're in bear country, he said. Use the bear box. He pointed at a brown painted metal rectangular box nearby. Do not leave food unattended, he paused. Maybe the box wasn't excessive. I almost asked if that meant I needed to close the box even if I was standing next to it cooking. Would a mere moment of the door being open invite bears to run in? But I didn't want to scare Aiden with my lack of knowledge, so I simply nodded. Keep all food, coolers, and bags out of sight or in the box, he continued. I swallowed. Uh, is it safe to keep anything in the car? I asked, revealing a little of my ignorance. He nodded, yes, but don't keep anything where it's visible in the car. Bears know what coolers and backpacks look like. <laughs> they can get into cars. <laughs> okay, I replied, glancing at my car behind his shoulder. Also, nothing scented in the tent. That's important, he added. My brain was a flurry of unasked questions. What exactly was not scented relative to being inside the tent? Weren't the clothes I'd worn while cooking now scented? Shit, I used deodorant. I was scented. <laughs> the host was walking away when he casually tossed out, one last thing, if a bear comes into the campsite, yell, yell loudly and look big and menacing. <laughs> At five foot five, I was pretty damn sure there was no way I could look big and menacing to a bear, even if I stood on the bear box. <laughs> I squashed the panic trying to burst out with a cool nod. I looked around at other campers, older couples, families with young kids. Everyone looked happy and not scared. How unsafe could it be? I resolved to not let some fear of something that maybe wouldn't even happen devour my joy of the woods. Even so, sometimes I quietly looked over my shoulder. When asked, did you see a bear? We saw one in another part of the campground. I repressed a shudder and counted myself <laughs> blessed that no bears had wandered through our sight. The trip was magical. We fumbled and stumbled, excelled and laughed. We enjoyed campfires and hikes, the burble of the rivers, the incredible melodious song of the birds, Gazing at starlight through the trees and the crisp mountain air, my daughter and I grew closer. In the end, despite two campgrounds known for daily bear activity, we encountered nothing terrifying beyond the horrors of vault-style <laughs> toilets. 2021 came. I was eager to camp again. This time I was fueled by confidence and knowledge. We boldly struck out to the wilds in the giant redwoods, pines, and sequoias. At our first campground, in addition to verbal instructions and the plastic laminated sign fixed to our picnic table which warned of bears, we were given a flyer on what to do if we saw a bear. The backside held a numbered list of bear regulations. Mostly they were the same as what I'd learned the year prior, but there were two added rules. If a bear enters your campground, bang pots and pans, and if a bear shows its teeth or charges, stand tall, raise your arms, and yell, Bad bear <laughs> at the bear. I nearly snorted the water I was drinking out of my nose. Yell, bad bear at a charging bear? Uh, yeah. The next morning I was awakened at 5.30 by a clanging accompanied by indistinct yelling in the distance. My sleep-addled brain struggled to parse the disturbance. After my morning coffee, it sunk in. The banging had been pots and pans. Someone had been trying to scare off a bear. The next morning, I quietly sipped my coffee, journal in hand, listening to the birds and smelling the pines while my daughter slept. Someone passed by and greeted me, and then asked if I'd seen a bear. I uttered a relieved no. Midday, we headed to the trailhead to hike six miles to the largest grove of giant sequoias in the park. The parking lot near the trail held a mere six cars. 
we smiled in anticipation of solitude. The day prior, our hike near the visitor center with its easy access to a grove of sequoias had felt too crowded in the wake of pandemic wrought isolation. We crossed a small bridge over a river. Below, a group of 10 frolicked and lazed in the water. They had to account for two carloads. There couldn't be many people on the trail. As promised, the hike was pleasantly shaded as it meandered through the soaring trees. We walked alone, bantering. We pointed to sites that caught our eyes and stopped to take photos. We'd been hiking for perhaps 30 minutes. We'd seen no one and were enjoying the solitude. My daughter was on my left. I turned to look at her. My eyes caught something sequestered in the trees and brush. Multi-hued brown fur gleamed in the sunlight. My brain sputtered in an attempt to process the visual input. The gleam is the fur of an animal's head. That's a, that's a bear? That's a fucking bear. Oh my God, that's a fucking bear looking at Aiden and me from a mere 20 feet away. Adrenaline kicked me into high gear. My mind flashed to 12-year-old me and my mom and a mouse. I was not going to do what my mom did. I was not putting my daughter between the bear and me. <laughs> Without a thought, I shouted, bad bear, bad bear, at the top of my lungs. My daughter startled, not having seen it at all until I shouted. I kept my eyes on the bear as we continued down the trail. All the while, I shouted as loudly as I possibly could and imagined myself to be 10 feet tall. We rounded a bend, putting the bear behind us. With an explosive exhalation, I stopped shouting. My daughter quipped she had no idea I could yell that loud. <laughs> Truthfully, I didn't either. We nervously discussed the bear. It had looked relatively small, though, giant in the moment. Was it an adolescent? If so, had Mama Bear been anywhere nearby? <laughs> Perhaps 15 minutes later, we finally encountered other hikers headed back towards the parking lot. I told them of the bear. They thanked me. The grove, the trees in the thick of the grove were mind-blowing. Soaring upwards of 300 feet, they stood with majestically huge trunks, some near 25 feet in diameter. They were a calm, reassuring presence. Many bore the marks of fires long past, which had only served to hone them into their uniquely beautiful forms. On the way back, we passed hikers headed in. We saw a bear, they chimed as they drew close. They pointed off to the side of the trail. It went over that way. I calmly said to my daughter, I don't need to see the bear again. <laughs> Soon we came upon the bridge over the river and the beginning and end of the trail. The bear had not reappeared. Later, I remarked on how funny it was I had responded exactly as instructed <laughs> to loudly shout, bad bear. <laughs> it had come out subconsciously in a moment where everything inherent in maternal bearing had kicked in. There was a bear and there was no way anything was happening to my daughter. The remainder of our trip was predator free. I felt only immense peace in the woods. I'd faced a fear and surpassed it. In the moment, I wasn't even scared. I was proactive. When I told my mom about the bear encounter, she didn't ask a single question about the experience. Instead, she took over with the tale of an overnight by herself as part of a self-improvement workshop and how scared she was to be outdoors alone. I was as invisible to her as the bear had been visible to me, just like always. I vowed not to repeat these behaviors with my daughter. I developed the habit of saying, I do not want to become my mother. I do not want to do these things to you. Aiden always responds with, Mom, you are so not like Grandma. That's not going to happen. Aiden isn't scared to camp again. She speaks with confidence that I have her back and she can depend on me. In moments of stress, she's seen me repeatedly rise to the challenge to protect and guide her. In contrast, if my mom had been on the hike, on the remote chance she even saw the bear, in all likelihood, she would have hid behind me. Becoming like my mother is nearly as terrifying to me as the thought of encountering a bear in the woods had been. 
But Aiden's right. I am not my mom and never will be. Thank you. Kelly Bowen, ladies and gentlemen.